So in this video, I'm going to talk about translation, the second part of the uh, videos covering how to build a protein. So we saw in the first video, in the process of transcription, we made an mRNA copy, and now we're going to talk about how that copy goes out to the ribosome um, in the cytoplasm, and ultimately that code is read in order to help the protein, uh, help the ribosome assemble the protein by putting the correct amino acids together. So um, we're going to see if we kind of zoom in, maybe uh, these are all the players in translation. We'll see that there are three different RNAs that all play a role, and we'll talk about their roles in turn. So mRNA we'll talk about first, uh, the same messenger RNA that came from the nucleus uh, in the first step of transcription, the only nucleic acid that's involved in both steps. Uh, we'll see that there's tRNA, the T stands for transfer RNA. We'll see that transfer RNAs each carry one amino acid, and their goal is to bring it to the right place through a mechanism that we'll see. And then the third RNA is uh, rRNA, or ribosomal RNA. That's the RNA in the actual ribosome that puts the amino acids together um, to make something that will eventually fold up and become a protein when it has its right final shape. So let's go into the steps. We'll see that, again, mRNA's job is to actually uh, carry the copy of the code, and it's going to be read. And we'll see now that the, the code is translated uh, when three nitrogen bases kind of uh, get translated as one amino acid. So uh, we have a name for kind of each group of three. We call a group of three a codon, um, and it's mRNA that carries the code, so it has the codons. And so we'll eventually give you a chart to be able to uh, read RNA code and know which amino acids it's asking for, in essence. Um, just to briefly go over how you read this chart, um, in a group of three letters, the first letter is over here on the left. And so that will basically tell you which set of uh, three letter, uh, which set of rows you're looking at. Um, so let's just do kind of a one codon as an example. You'll see eventually that all um, uh, proteins kind of start with the codon AUG. So A tells us that we're looking in this set of rows. Uh, then we go up here to the top to figure out which column to look at. So for AUG, we look at the first column. And then the third letter in your uh, group of three will tell you which uh, kind of more specific row to look at. So AUG codes for something called methionine, um, or, or we're just going to abbreviate as MET. Um, so uh, that is sort of how the, the mRNA asks for amino acids. Now let's move on to our second uh, RNA in the process. Transfer RNAs actually carry the amino acids. Each one carries a very particular amino acid. And how do they know where to bring it? Because remember that amino acid order is important. Um, so this is how the actual translation takes place. As it turns out, tRNAs also have a set of three letters. Um, and we call them anti-codons. Anti meaning opposite. So they have the opposite three letters so that they pair up with the appropriate mRNA codon and bring the amino acid right there. So let's kind of see that in action. Uh, maybe if you go to your translation table really quickly, you could pause the video. Go ahead and prove to yourself that GCC in mRNA code is asking for alanine or ala. Um, in this picture. And so maybe there's a tRNA that specifically carries alanine. Maybe it would actually be up here. So let's say that this is um, the actual alanine amino acid. And then it would bring that amino acid to the right place because tRNA will have an anti-codon, anti meaning opposite. Um, it would have CGG to pair up with GCC so that it would make sure it would land right there and drop off alanine to the right place. And so I want you to imagine that then it would be followed by the next tRNA, who would bring the next amino acid. And maybe proteins are made of, of thousands of amino acids, and so each tRNA would bring the amino acid to the right spot. Okay, so now let's talk about our RNA's role. Um, our RNA is just in the ribosome. Um, and the rRNA is actually putting the amino acids together as they are brought in one at a time by the transfer RNAs. Um, uh, technically, peptide bonds are what kind of link together amino acids, so it's the, it's the rRNA inside the ribosome that's actually starting to link together the protein. 
And so here's just kind of a quick little image of that again. Maybe this is a tRNA right here, bringing in the amino acid to the right spot. Maybe it's anti-codon pairs up with this um, mRNA codon. And then eventually the rRNA inside will kind of grab the amino acid and put it um, right next to the one that came in before. And um, how does this process eventually come to a stop? Eventually the rRNA will kind of run up against what's called a stop codon. So maybe there's a, a, a set of three letters in mRNA that basically just says stop. Uh, we're, we're finished putting amino acids together. Go ahead and just cut off the protein. And so the process eventually does come to a stop. Um, the mRNA might be recycled. Um, so the mRNA might actually be read again um, by another ribosome, or it might be kind of quickly chopped up um, into nucleotides again so that those nucleotides can go back into transcription and be used again. So um, uh, why are we so interested in this process of translation? Because that translation table you have in front of you really is a universal translation table. Um, it's sort of the same way the code is read by all living organisms. And that's really exciting to us biologists because that really makes it possible to take DNA code out of some organisms put it into other organisms and get them to make proteins they've never made before and therefore possess traits they've never had before. Here's just kind of a really cool example with color. So um, we actually made these bacteria glow with a jellyfish gene that they've never had in nature. Um, but because they know how to read the jellyfish DNA code, it's the same code, they can acquire that trait. And so we can actually make maybe bacteria do useful things too. Um, if you know any diabetics that take insulin, almost all of the insulin is now made by bacteria that's been engineered with the human DNA code for insulin. And so um, just in a brief summary, we talked about how the RNA code is actually translated into a sequence of amino acids that makes up a protein. Um, and we saw that there are really three RNAs that played a role. And we want to make sure you're clear about the, uh, how each RNA is a little different in the process of building the protein.